of surgery, the patient is extubated and although appears awake, saturation start to fall. What, what would you do? Um, I would put some oxygen on. Um, I'd use a 15 litre non rebreathe oxygen mask. Okay. What um, else would you do? I'd check that the actual saturation measurement was accurate and the SATS probe was reading correctly. Okay, what's going through your head? Why do you think this might have happened? Um, well, I'd think about the causes of hypoxia. Um, so there could, be, there could have been significant blood loss um, or some atelectasis. Um, maybe um, other causes of low saturations like pulmonary embolus. Um, Any other reasons? Uh, the patient could have aspirated. Okay. What do you think is more likely in this situation? Um, out of those, or? Well, just, what's the most likely cause of this man's hypoxia? Well, um, there could be a problem with the airway. Mm. It could have obstructed his airway. How would you know he'd obstructed? Um, we could assess the airway and I look for sort of noises or sounds of obstruction. Um, could try using um, a Goodell. Okay, so if he was obstructed, you'd use a Goodell. So it could be obstruction. What else, why else could ventilation be reduced in this situation? Um, so some of the drugs that we use can affect the mm -hmm. breathing. So okay. um, given the circumstances, what drugs? could you have given that might have caused hypoxia? Uh, so the muscle relaxants, um, if they haven't been reversed correctly. Success in answering this question is dependent on delivering an appropriate, logical and structured approach. This is a critical incident and the examiner is looking to establish that you have the knowledge of the causes of post-optive hypoxia and prompt safe management. The examiner will need to satisfy himself that if you were managing the patient, you would be able to manage the situation appropriately and safely. Although this candidate did not make any major errors, the structure of the answer was inadequate. She didn't have a clear list of causes and a prompt structured plan to manage the problem. She doesn't ask for help and needs led by the examiner into making a treatment plan. She makes a decision to reintubate on blood gas analysis and doesn't consider clinical parameters. To satisfy the examiner, it is necessary to both list the causes in the order in which they present the most immediate threat to life. Although you are expected to describe your approach, it is expected that you will ask for help from a senior colleague at a very early stage. In terms of management, I would expect you to manage airway obstruction in a logical manner and know about the equipment you would use. A clear plan for failure of the initial management is essential. You should know the parameters for reintubation, which would include clinical parameters in addition to the blood glass results. This is a small section of a question and the examiner will continue with other relevant questions to this patient's care. However, I have outlined the detail and level of understanding and knowledge expected in this small section of a clinical problem-solving question. Okay, at the end of surgery, the patient is extubated and although he appears awake, his saturations start to fall. What would you do? Well, firstly, I'd call for help whilst making a thorough and rapid assessment of the airway, breathing and circulation and putting on 100% oxygen. Okay. What do you think is going on in this situation? So I'd start with the airway and I'd look for any signs of obstruction and I would treat as I found. So I would open up the airway with simple manoeuvres, um, chin lift, jaw thrust, maybe um, use an oropharyngeal airway or other airway adjunct. And then once I was happy with airway, I'd move on and assess the breathing. I'd look, for, listen to the chest and look for any signs of asymmetry or unequal um, air entry, also any added sounds, and again treating as I found. Um, also in breathing and ventilation, um, you'd make sure you'd had adequate reversal of your muscle relaxants. Um, I would then also move on to assess circulation and look at the blood pressure and pulse and again treat as I found. And then further on down the line, um, assess disability, maybe check a blood sugar, assess conscious level, um, 
but again, these would be further down the line once airway and breathing were assessed and dealt with. Okay, if, if the patient didn't improve despite those interventions, what would you do next? Well, I'd make sure again that I've called for help and that someone mm -hmm. is there, mm -hmm. um, and I would um, reintubate the patient and ventilate them and contact the ICU team.